In his new book, Bloody Crossroads, Art, Entertainment, and Resistance to Trump, author Danny Goldberg takes a deep dive into the role that mass appeal movies, television, videos, and music played in Donald Trump's failed re-election campaign, as well as the impact of entertainment, celebrities, in communications, fundraising, and campaigning to support the election of Joe Biden. Goldberg takes a closer look at the, quote, liberal Hollywood tradition and describes how between 2016 and 2020, countless artists coalesced around a central moral rejection of Trumpism. Danny joins us now to expand. Welcome to Rising. Hey, thanks for having me on. Sure. And, you know, you've been in the industry for half a century uh, wow. now at this, at this point. Uh, how have you seen the politics of entertainers e evolve over that, over that time? Well, I think there was a big paradigm shift when Trump was elected in 2016. In the previous decades, in the time I've been around, there was a group of what we used to call the usual suspects, people like Jane Fonda and in recent decades Springsteen and John Legend, who were the so-called activist artists. And most, most entertainers, celebrities, directors, comedians were, were, were not. Uh, in, in, in 1999, when Jon Stewart started hosting... Uh, the, the show, um, he, he, uh, he was the only late night host who was talking about politics every night. After Trump, it was every host every night. Uh, you know, in previous times, a lot of the pop icons like uh, Whitney Houston and Mariah Carey didn't talk about politics at all. After Trump, you had uh, megastars like Taylor Swift, Cardi B joining in. After Trump, you had actors like Robert De Niro and Bette Midler, who previously had kept their politics mostly to themselves, feeling the need to be engaged. So the idea of a reality TV show host being in the Oval Office combined with the feeling that there was uh, racism and sexism in the way that he got elected and that he got fewer popular votes than his opponent uh, galvanized the resistance that included um, the majority of, of artists and entertainers at a level that was... Uh, far greater than, uh, than in previous decades. And do you, do you think that's a, a, a good thing, a good phenomenon? Because, I mean, I kind of like the idea of having politics confined to the political realm or at least having some aspects of our natural, uh, national cultural uh, situation where politics does not take a central role. And as you, as you noted, you, now virtually every celebrity, artist, musician on the planet you know, wants to say, is going to say something about Trump, about Black Lives Matter, about other things, uh, possibly alienating the you know, roughly half or a little less than half of the country uh, who doesn't feel that way. Uh, but so, so how do you, do you think this is a, a good development? Well, I think from the point of view of American politics, it's a good development because otherwise the populist communication is limited to right wing talk radio and Facebook algorithms that uh, that uh, that uh, gin up the most right wing parts of of, of the voting population. Uh, you know, Republicans put uh, uh, Ronald Reagan in the White House and then later Trump. So they've plucked from show business two presidents. In terms of how it affects the cultural arena, it depends on how artists do it. If they're preachy, if they're didactic, if they're annoying, yeah, it can turn off some people. But I think most fans respect the idea that performers are human beings, that they uh, have uh, the right to their political opinions just as much as uh, billionaires do or labor unions or uh, any of the other forces that influence the political conversation. And Republicans love to say that they're actually happy about this development because they say, you know, Hollywood is unpopular. These, these entertainers and, and elites are unpopular and it's going to actually help them. I think a little bit of that is sour grapes because as soon as a, a C-list musician is willing to play, you know, they're going to headline the RNC. Uh, you know, not that Kid Rock is C-list, but some of the one, other ones are <laughs> below him. So, and, and Donald Trump very famously coveted, you know, acceptance uh, among, among Hollywood. But to your point, how, what percentage of them roughly do you think are the, are the annoying didactic types? And having looked at this closely, do you, do you think they actually did, you know, benefit or did they, did they actually harm Trump in the end? Well, all we know is that they were part of a coalition that defeated Trump. It's impossible to know exactly what motivated individual voters. There are certain facts that we know that, that a table read of the Princess Bride raised $7 million for the Wisconsin Democratic Party, the biggest 
grassroots fundraiser that they had, that Cardi B's uh, YouTube videos with Bernie Sanders and later with Biden reached more people than any of the nightly newscasts did on those nights and, 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 and so forth. It's hard to know what motivates the base to turn out. But we know in 2016, 5.7 percent of voters voted for so-called third parties, Libertarian and Green Party. A lot of those were young people that were turned off by both parties. And Biden was able to reduce that amount to 1.7 percent. And that difference of 4 percent is why he won. And I, I would argue that those people are what we used to call, or what folks like you call, low information voters who are not susceptible to traditional campaigning. And that sort of the spirit and atmosphere that, that the uh, popular culture created uh, played a role. Obviously, you can't uh, know w w what what uh, exactly was the result. But I think in terms of turning out the base and motivating reluctant voters that artists and entertainers are, are part of the mix. Are they and are they going getting political because they really care that much or and maybe they do. Maybe you're going to say that they do. Or is it because their fans, the, their the customers uh, act are increasingly politically involved, paying attention to Trump and, and want the artist to to make a statement and to and to be and do, to be politically active and to be speaking out politically? I think most uh, artists and stars that I know do it because they feel some sort of moral calling to, to weigh in. Uh, I don't know of anyone who's been helped by being politically outspoken. Um, I, I, I think somebody like Bruce Springsteen certainly has Republican fans. Uh, but, but I feel that compared to other people who try to influence elections, like giant corporations or uh, lobbyists uh, for them, um, that that artists and entertainers are, are pretty sincere about about their uh, political activity, and uh, some people have paid a small price for it with their fans. But I think most fans can differentiate between uh, listening to Born to Run and what Bruce Springsteen says about the election. So, from say like the the 1970s on, uh, when when enter, do you think that did entertainers have because you know you knew a lot of them quite intimately. Did they have passionate politics that they declined to share, either for you know commercial reasons or for some type of uh, ethical reason that they felt like it wasn't their their place, and that that snapped in in 2016? Or what kind of what what was the the change? Or did they just not in the 70s 80s kind of have strongly held politics across the board in the in the industry? Well, in the 70s and 80s, there's certain people like certainly people like Jackson Brown and Jane Fonda and uh, Ed Asner and Mike Farrell, who were politically active. But they were, as I was referring before, the sort of usual suspects, that cohort of artists who felt that political activism was kind of part of their persona. I think Trump, because uh, of the way he got elected, uh, the, uh, the racism in a lot of his campaign statements, the uh, access Hollywood tape that was so offensive to so many women and the fact that he came from show business and had been the host for 14 years of a of an NBC uh, reality TV show which people in Hollywood know didn't bear too much relationship to actual reality that if that kind of energy was going to affect government policy and who the Secretary of State was and what the tax rates were and, and uh, police practices and things like that that a lot of artists and entertainers, people like Robert De Niro, who previously hadn't been that outspoken, just felt kind of a, a moral obligation to weigh in, along with the millions of people who showed up at the Women's March or at airports after the Muslim ban or things like that. Artists and entertainers were sort of part of a general feeling uh, in what we call the resistance, and I think that it was a much broader group of uh, people who were motivated because of the um, pain they felt about, about Trump. Uh, uh, yeah. Danny Goldberg, thank you so much for talking with us today. We really appreciate it. So nice of you to let me talk about this. Thank you. The book yeah. is Bloody Crossroads 2020, Art, Entertainment, and Resistance to Trump. You can find that in uh, wherever books are sold. We'll have more Rising right after this. Stay with us.